yeah, it was a it was a round of data this whole week. I mean, we just saw so much stuff, everything from inflation data to some jobs data to some economic reads. And uh, that leaves us off today with Friday being a lot of economic reads. But some interesting, interesting stuff here. Uh, we saw the Empire State Manufacturing Index came out, um, you know, a surprise to the downside there, which has been a theme across uh, a lot of uh, sentiment reads and economic reads. Uh, so we saw a, a forecast of minus seven. Uh, we saw the actual number came out as minus 20.9, but it, it gets more concerning when we talk about the big one for today. And one of my favorite economic indicators, which is the Consumer Sentiment Survey from the University of Michigan. We got the preliminary numbers here today and it disappointed. And so we were forecasting 77.1 on the index. We got 76.9. And the reason that matters here um, is that the consumer, uh, we live in a, a consumer-based economy here in the United States, as we do in many other uh, countries in the Western world. It's consumer-based economy. So the middle class and the, the ability of the consumer to really um, stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the, the rest of them is very, very important to economic health. If consumers are doing well, um, they're out there spending, they're out there getting loans, they're borrowing money, they're, they're spending money, they're stimulating the economy. That uh, involvement from, from consumers and, and their outlook forward uh, looking is very important. It's one of my favorite indicators because similar to the PMI, which is uh, of the purchasing managers index, the consumer sentiment allows us to get the consensus of the consumer. How are you feeling now and how are you feeling looking forward? So to see this number hit a fresh three month low um, is concerning. And, and not only that, we tie that in Johnny to what we saw the rest of this week. We saw hot inflation reads. We saw both the producer price index as well as the consumer price index showing hot reads this, this week. Um, you tie that in with retail sales, which also, also was disappointing. I think we're seeing at this point a consistent theme. This is not something that is, you know, an anomaly one number. We are generally seeing from what we talk about on these podcasts, we're seeing slow down in the US economy uh, and we're seeing stubborn inflation still taking its toll. Um, and you can see that when we take a look at the, the, the market here this week, we saw a bounce back in the dollar index. Um, if you are somebody who watches commodities, gold is holding its gains despite these hot dollar reads, right? The high inflation, et cetera, you would expect, well, maybe gold's gonna give back some gains. Not so fast because that economic print is still showing some slowdown. Then you take a look at the indices. I'm looking at the NASDAQ, I'm looking at the S&P 500. These things are down on the day. Um, and you know it seems very rare to even get red weeks these, uh, these days with the indices, but we're seeing some challenge to the, to the index kind of domination that has been you know, the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Nikkei, um, the FTSE, all of these things have just been running hot. Uh, we're seeing a little pushback on that with consumers now looking a little bit under pressure here today. Um, so definitely a very interesting week. We had a lot of uh, a lot of data come out this week. It was a really big one. And that sets us up well uh, for for next week, Johnny. Interesting, though, with the slowdown that you mentioned that we're seeing more or less across the board, uh, fairly significant slowdown across many uh, points of data, we're still not seeing certainty about when and how much those interest rate cuts when they come are going to be. There's still a difference of opinion amongst analysts and economists. And uh, there is a danger, of course, that they might leave it too late uh, on both sides of the Atlantic. And uh, we could go into a recession if rates are too high. Yes, yes. And that's that's the whole kind of uh, you outlined the, the big uh, problematic thing in the market right now is is you know, rate cuts are now on the, you know, they're, they're, they're coming, right? They're going to, if we continue to see these economic slowdown points um, roll in, yeah, we're probably going to see rate cuts this year. That That is the consensus. And I think that that's probably right. Now, what gets interesting is what you kind of were highlighting there. Are we going to see those rate cuts coming in because the economy is starting to slide? which is a not so pretty scenario, or is it interest rate cuts because inflation's coming down cool? When we turned the year, we everybody was pretty optimistic about the idea that interest rates are gonna get cut because inflation's gonna cool and the economy's gonna kinda continue to chug along. 
What's not so exciting is that we are now seeing the inflation problem is not totally beaten. And at the same time, um, we see uh, the economy starting to slide just a bit. So let's talk about next week now. We've got a big Fed meeting on Wednesday. Would that be the highlight for you? What else is happening? Yeah, next week is really big because this week I feel like we got a big round of data. Next week we get to hear from the people who make decisions based on that data, right? You've got the Fed on Wednesday. Um, on Thursday we do have the Swiss National Bank as well. Uh, we Following that we have the UK, um, their, their bank uh, rate votes, which will be interesting, and a monetary policy summary as well. That's a big event uh, for the UK, uh, of course, for traders who are watching the pound or watching um, the UK stock market, that will be a really big event. And then, um, yeah, so so I, I find that that will be the big concept next week is hearing from the central banks, hearing from the people who then make decisions based on all these numbers. And I think that, um, you know, maybe part of the, the skittishness that we're seeing a little bit of uptick in the dollar, a little bit of sell off in the stock indices right now um, is people a little worried that uh, the the Fed, you know, what are they going to say? Are they going to now kind of address that the economy, you know, is showing signs of slowing in the US, um, as you mentioned, alongside other places. Is that going to be the theme of what they start talking more about? Um, because you know now, Johnny, we think about what they've been saying. We wanna see inflation heading down to 2%. But if that trend has really slowed, are they going to just say, and this is the big thing I'll be looking for personally, are they gonna say, yeah, we need to push back interest rate cut expectations. Are, we, are they going to push back on that theory? Or are they going to point to the other side and say, well, we saw an uptick in unemployment. We saw some problems in other areas of the economy. You know, we're seeing some slowdown. Uh, that's the big question. What are they going to focus on? Are they going to focus on the, the more the economic prints that have been lackluster, or are they going to focus on inflation still not beaten? We're keeping these interest rates uh, where they're at. And I think the market might be getting a little skittish why the dollar's up, stock market down, is I think they might still stay strong and say, from the beginning, they've been okay with seeing the economy slow down uh, to a degree. What they're really insistent on is getting that inflation in the right direction. So I think next week will be huge. Finally, Nick, uh, we talked about Bitcoin the other day reaching new highs, but it's off its record high now and uh, come down a bit. Is that a bit of, uh, well, what we used to call profit taking? Yeah, and I, I wonder if that's what that is or, you know, with all of this um, conversation that we've been having, the dollar strength kind of resurged a little bit right around the same time that Bitcoin um, gave back some of its gains here. Um, I think that that 70,000 mark uh, was a psychological level. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Bitcoin profit taking, if that's what it is, it persists for a bit of time. And there is something else there, Johnny, that I think is really interesting. We've talked a lot and we've covered from the beginning of talking about, um, you know, the, the Bitcoin ETFs that hit the market, things like uh, the iShares Bitcoin Trust and this accessibility. I do also wonder if the, the, the mass quantities of Bitcoin that will be owned by these um, funds that are holding Bitcoin through their ETFs, right, for their investors, if it's so accessible to buy it, is there also the easy accessibility to sell it? And uh, because these uh, trusts and hold, holders of the Bitcoin uh, hold such large quantities, I do also wonder if sell-offs can be very violent too, just like we've seen a violent upside. Has volatility expanded for Bitcoin? And I think that that is really an interesting um, point to consider. For me, I'm a little skeptical as we get up to these levels. Um, you know, we've seen this story play out for several times now, not just, you know, in Bitcoin land, there's also been penny stock land and many very, very high risk, high reward areas. And when markets like this start to really slow down, that slowdown can come with huge sell-offs. So I'd be very careful up in these areas personally. Um, I'll, I'll see if we can get back above that 70,000 level, but uh, for now, bulls giving that back or, or bears taking it over, however you'd like to look at it. I think short-term Bitcoin is looking a little uh, concerning up at these levels.